Yeah. And yeah. I got the post up here. Now, this is one I actually did want to read. Word up. And this is the one I said, like, hey, like, if if we were there at the company, let's say I'm I'm mm-hmm. on IR, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. and GRC, what are we what are we thinking about Facts. here? Facts, yeah, yeah. So she posted this three days ago. She said, it finally happened. The first confirmed zero-click command injection against a production AI assistant, CVE 2025-32711. Mm-hmm. Cybersecurity researchers discovered it last week. No phishing leak, no malware. Just the prompt engineer to silently trigger Microsoft 365 Copilot into leaking private organizational data. Mm. I know what you may be thinking. Aren't all prompt injection attacks technically zero-click? Traditional AI prompt attacks usually rely on user interaction. Tricking someone into pasting a malicious prompt or clicking a poison email. CVE 2025-32711 didn't need any of that. The attacker sent the prompt via email, calendar, etc. that copilot processed silently in the background. Mm -hmm. No clicks, no visibility, and no other action. To be clear, the way this works is the email calendar invite arrives in the victim's inbox. No read, click required. Sending the user's inbox is enough because copilot ingested as part of its background context processing. Microsoft has passed it, but the lesson is bigger than the CVE. AI pipelines need to treat all input as hostile. Context boundaries need to be enforced, not assumed. Prompt handling is a user experience layer and a security function. For those deploying Copilot or similar tools, audit the blast radius of your AI workflows. Most organizations still don't fully understand what data their AI assistant agents can see, Mm -hmm. let alone what might trigger them to share it. Mm -hmm. If you like keeping your company's intellectual property if you like keeping your company's intellectual property private and you have artificial intelligence deployed in your environment, read this post two times. Today's video is sponsored by Aura, and it's a really important time to be talking about them because hackers may have stolen the social security numbers of every American. Over 2.9 billion records were stolen from the national public data, which provides personal information to employers and others doing background checks. These stolen records include a person's full name, address, date of birth, phone number, and most importantly, social security number. And members of the hacker group have reportedly released this information for free online. Now, this could be incredibly dangerous to you because people can open up all different type of things in your name and you won't even know it. If you weren't taking precautions with your personal information online before this, then this should be a huge wake-up call. You've never been more vulnerable online than you are right now. But I'm not too worried about that because I use Aura. Aura monitors your personal data, including your social security number across billions of data points like the dark web and public court records to detect and alert you to potential identity theft. They give you up to $5 million in identity theft insurance should the worst case scenario happen. They also provide a bunch of other features to keep you safe online, all inside one app. You can go to my link right now, aura.com forward slash textual chatter to try 14 days for free. That'll be enough time for Aura to find out if any of your personal data is exposed. I highly recommend you do this right now because not only is the national public data not going to do anything to help you, they probably aren't even going to face any repercussions for this leak. I'm not leaving myself and my family vulnerable to data breaches. If you don't want either, you can go to Aura.com forward slash textual chatter to try two weeks for free. Now back to the video. The next wave of breaches will probably come from AI behaving exactly as designed, but not as expected. So we all have to spend our thinking around risk management and governance as we continue to enable business innovation with AI. Mm. So I feel like this is a good use case and stuff like this. Absolutely. These are like the type of questions when I'm on interviews and yeah. I write my questions out. Yeah. I asked like, I had an interview, I forgot what it was, a couple of months ago, but okay. funny enough, I asked them, hey, how are y'all handling third-party risk management? Yeah. Whatever, what yeah. we was talking about. And it was like crazy. We just had a meeting about that today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I'm always trying to find stuff that's currently going on. Yeah. So I can ask it. So I'm like, okay, this person's engaged with security news. And this is how yeah. this is how I answer the question, hey, how do I stay informed about um, security threats or whatever? Because they typically, sometimes they want to ask that. I was mm-hmm. like, this is how. Yeah. But in our scenario, you GRC, I'm on the blue team. Love it. We got our security engineers over there, our vendors. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Well, that's a really good question. I would say uh, I recently did some content creation um, revolving around cyber, uh, excuse me, around AI, some of the drawbacks and some of the different security challenges. I think that at the end of the day, AI is a tool, right? It's a tool. Um, You know, the buzzword has been going around quite some time because a lot of companies are looking to adopt it into their organizations, but AI has been around for quite some time. Um, and with it being a tool, you know, malicious actors are, you know, taking advantage of that opportunity to say, you know, this can be another entry point 
um, for us to, you know, perform a data breach to your organization. Um, I will say that um, a lot of the groups that I've, you know, uh, supported most recently are more in the public sector space. Um, so there is a, a slow, slow, um, you know, start when it comes to, you know, adopting AI to the organizations. A lot of people aren't as um, trigger happy to use this mm -hmm. new tool because we have to consider the risk management behind it. And I've made a point earlier, you know, security is normally an afterthought. We think about, you know, the shiny new tools that's going to help us do things better. It's going to help us, you know, save time, save money, um, you know, but at the end of that, you know, at what cost, right? And we have to always ask ourselves, you know, with the decisions we make, was it really worth it? I think that AI is going to be something that's going to continue to be around for some time as of cybersecurity is as well. Um, but the sophistication of the attacks is just going to get um, more crazier and crazier, not to take a step away from the, um, you know, the, the use case that you just proposed. But, you know, within my research, I'm learning that, you know, even someone that doesn't have any cybersecurity experience can create a sophisticated, you know, uh, phishing campaign to make someone that is well aware to actually like click on a phishing link. You know, they can, you know, uh, launch like ransomware without having that typical background to do so just because AI is a tool that they can kind of create that aspect. Yeah. So I'm glad you said that because for years I've been telling people how like, Hey, every industry is not gung ho on introducing AI because, mm -hmm. As much as you can get from productivity, you bring the risk. Right. Like this instance, it's function how it's supposed to. Now, typically you would hope your tool, like uh, either like a proof point or mom cast or something, mm -hmm. would catch this. But it's mm -hmm. only going to catch it if it deems it to be malicious. Mm -hmm. So sometimes proof point will say, oh, this is an unknown sender. I'm just going to hold it right here in limbo because mm -hmm. I don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. And you got other services that use like proof point tap and everything else. Yeah. We'll like say, hey, go check this out. And yeah. We don't know what this is supposed to be is. And then that's when, you know, we can actually look at it and say, hmm, what's this calendar invite from, from that? So mm -hmm. typically if your tools work, is fine, which I think this is why a company like proof point, you got Microsoft, they got like Thread Explorer and now these things else. So as they study AI mm -hmm. and they upgrade their tools, that should help out with that. Mm -hmm. Then let's take it a step further. Let's Thanks. say somebody is using LinkedIn and yep. so they figure out, oh, you work with so-and-so company mm -hmm. on the GRC team. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. figure out who your manager is. Mm -hmm. So now they some type of way are able to Utilize AI to send you like an email spoofing like whatever your manager's email. Address. So you think you're talking mm -hmm. to your manager. Mm -hmm. And now they say, hey, you got time for, you know, a, a quick call. You join the call. It may be figure out how they do something on the background, trying to put something on your machine. But not only that, now with the advances in AI, they got a fake AI deep, person that looks just like your boss. Deep fakes. And sound like them. Crazy. And so now you think you you talking to them. So I was like. Now you have to tell people, hey, get up, turn around, do all this other stuff. Yeah. But when it comes to all this different like AI stuff. So it's just like, like I said, people are already looking at the the part of like, okay, we don't have to hire as many people. Mm -hmm. Snap. I'm like, okay, you can we just see iRobot. You can keep on playing games if yeah, you want to. Yeah, facts. Or you have companies like Clon that said, Well, hey, this AI stuff ain't go the way we thought it would. Mm -hmm. We gotta hire people again. Yeah. Or you have like, you know, they wanna use the AI, a lot of times when you call in to customer service and stuff, I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, they only understand these things. I did not understand you. Send yeah. you to an agent. Then you only got like four agents. Yeah. The bias <laughs> behind it. Is I was crazy. like, it's just, it's just not at a level yet. That's why I was like, people should like, now that use case is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And so now you have to figure out too, it's like, okay, what is the reason behind even having Copilot in our, you know, enterprise environment? Facts, facts, facts. Yeah. And, and, and to that point, like I said, AI is something that is um, a slow, slow, so slow, slow um, implementation from the public sector standpoint. Um, you know, they they've been hearing about it for quite some time, but you know, as the government typically moves, they don't they're not gonna you know jump on it first time it comes around. Versus, like I've worked in private sector as well, you know, and it's it's not a hard task to get someone on board to, you know, start working with the new best thing because they see how it can impact their organization. Um, so I talked about the the public sector standpoint. If, if it was a private sector company that's looking to bring this AI capability on, 
and there's no workaround within it. Um, you know, from a GRC standpoint, I'm looking at doing a risk assessment on this particular, you know, instance. Have I done a lot of risk assessments on AI? I would, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. That hasn't been my thing, right? But it's probably going to be more opportunities with doing some of that stuff in the future. Bro, you low key should just apply to like, when I say like Microsoft probably had like 50 roles for like AI governance Word. roles, I promise you, bro. They literally, like the experience you didn't need was like crazy. So like people like you with that background, that's mm-hmm. what they was looking for. Mm-hmm. Because that's what they trying to prepare for and help out with all their different customers and stuff that they got going on. Microsoft, get at me. Uh, but yeah, just just the, the, the last point I just mm-hmm. wanted to make was just that um, within that, it's about the risk assessment, but it's also about having the right um, policies in place too. Like you got to have, you know, and I love the type of work that, you know, GRC has introduced me to because we're not into the nitty gritty, but we consider everything at a high level to ensure that it impacts not only the business, but the people that work for that particular business. And those particular people have to be able to abide by some type of standard or it, people are going to do any and everything they want to do. There's not going to be any structure in your organization. So creating those policies to say, if we're adopting this particular um, tool into our, our organization, then these are the type of, you know, things that everyone needs to abide by. And then, you know, down into the top of that, you know, we got to have like, you know, people like yourself, you know, from that, that blue team perspective to be able to, um, ensure that AI is doing what it's supposed to do. You know, I, I think it's it's crazy because when you you look at it, I look at AI as like um, a, a tool of knowledge, excuse me, a lake of knowledge is what I meant to say. Like, you know, whatever you tell it, it's going to spit back something based off of that. So my two cents to everyone I talk to is to not put any sensitive information out there mm-hmm. because it's going to go into that pool and God forbid somebody said, tell me about Jane Doe, you know, they're going to be able to spit that back out because you have misused the, the tool for what it wasn't supposed to be. Um, but they didn't tell you you couldn't use it to that degree. Right. It's about having conversations and listening to, you know, type of conversations like these to help you determine like what you should was your rather not what you shouldn't be doing, you know? Yeah. And that also reminded me, like, as I was driving here, I thought about it was stupid, but it had me thinking about like. Years ago, using MySpace, being mm-hmm. on the internet and stuff like that. Nobody, like, grandparents, them, they don't know nothing, like, Facts. how to be safe on that. So I was like, Facts. like, who's, like, training up the kids now? Because they got so much access to technology. Mm-hmm. What to put on there, what not to put on there. Facts. Who to talk to, who not to talk to. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to AI. Mm-hmm. All these different things. Like, this is their reality now. They finna yeah. be watching commercials with, like, AI people and stuff. Or believing mm-hmm. the stuff that they showing with AI. Absolutely. And it's going to come to that time mm-hmm. where now you got to educate them. So, no, I you know. agree. Agree.